Hey everyone, so up to now we've spent some time looking at our heart and our eagerness concerning the Holy Spirit. We've looked at how the presence of the Holy Spirit is part of the same sense of God being with his people in wind and fire in the Old Testament. And we've also looked at how the Spirit in us is described in terms of living water that flows from within us. So maybe now you're at the point where you're thirsty, you're eager, and you want more of God's powerful presence in your life. And therefore, maybe your question is, well, how do we receive the Holy Spirit and have our thirst quenched? Now, to help us understand just how big this question is, we're going to look again at a passage you're becoming familiar with. And that is the passage when the Holy Spirit first comes down on all of the believers in Acts chapter 2. You remember there was a sound like a sound of a rushing wind and what looked like tongues of flame that came and rested on everyone in the room as the Spirit came upon them. A few hours later, Peter is preaching and he explains that this was prophesied by Joel in Joel chapter 2, which says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. You see, up to that point of time, God's spirit only came upon people like Moses and Joshua and David. And so in one sense, God's power and presence was always among his people. But in terms of being in and upon individuals, it was only these heroes of the faith, these legendary leaders that had experienced God's spirit in this way. In other words, this wasn't something for me if I was born in that time. I would never think of asking to receive the same spirit as Moses and Joshua and David. And yet the prophet Joel told of a time when that would be the case. And Acts 2 was when that happened. So circling around back to us, the fact that we can receive God's spirit is such a powerful and beautiful gift, one that we should never take lightly. But finally, as we head into this week's Equip Group, This conversation about receiving the Spirit is an area that is filled with debate and potentially division. And so we're going to cover this ground one step at a time. So try and pace yourself with us as we go through the weeks. But secondly, on one hand, please feel the freedom to ask and engage the questions that you may genuinely have. But on the other, please also be aware of the potential of division, of believers who maybe see things differently to you, and of course, Believers for whom this is all brand new, as we are all in different places in our journey. But having said that, enjoy the journey as we all want the same thing, more of the presence and power of God's spirits in our lives.